Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Boz, and it is Tuesday night. We are live on the Dr. Boz Show with some updates for the week, but a great show about some questions about pregnancy, a guest uh, who also has some thyroid troubles, and let's talk about how keto fits into those two problems. So if you're curious about that topic, stick around. We have a great show for you tonight and a really cool guest. Um, I am happy to uh, state that in the last week, I've had some successes and losses <laughs> on how to improve my own health and share you some of my ups and downs. Uh, before I get started on that, I just want to check in with my, uh, in those chats, the sound is low. Let me fix that. Thank you for saying that out loud. I can move the microphone a little closer to my mouth, which is always what my sound guy keeps saying. Be sure to do that. Be sure to do that. Uh, we need more volume. So hopefully everybody can hear that now. And I'm going to go into another place and try to dial it up a little bit. Let's go here and here even higher. So trying that sound now. Uh, volume is low. Everybody's saying volume is low. Let's go here. And now it should be better. Um, so give me feedback on the sound before we go any further because the best part about what happens on a live is if it doesn't go well, still low. Um, if it doesn't go well, I can have this part edited out. And so I've got my my mouth a lot better, a lot closer to the microphone, and we've got all the volumes turned way up. So um, much better. Thank you very much. Volume is uh, better. Sounds good to me. Better, better. Okay. All right. I think everybody agrees we're in at least a better place. Thank you so much. And again, you guys are the best sound checks ever because I truly count on you for saying, can you hear me? Can you see me? And uh, it's been a while. Uh, starting last week was the first time I had a guest on my show again mainly because of the intense anxiety about having a guest on uh, and not being able to hear them, <laughs> which I've done before. Last week went well, so we are excited to do that again. But before we do that, we're going to get started with some traditions here on the Dr. Boz Show, and that is to check my numbers. So if you've been following along, this past week I have recommitted to a few things that um, I hadn't been doing very well and now um, started doing a little better, which is checking my own numbers. And um, that includes uh, not just the time on my fast. So as many of you know, I fast every week and I show up to my, oh shoot, I show up to my show with a fasted, uh, in a fasted state. And uh, we'll count down my sugars here and my ketones. Somehow I wasn't looking what I was doing very closely there. So my sugar came back at 88. And we are going to look at that ketone here in just a second, uh, unless it dries. Here we go. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, sweet. All right. So count down those ketones and the glucose of 88. But this is after last week when we revealed the big reveal of what was my hemoglobin A1C. If you didn't check that out, so hemoglobin A1C that wasn't as perfect as I wanted it to be. So glucose today is 88. Ketones are 1.1, and if a team of you will uh, just let me know uh, <laughs> what that number of a Dr. Boz ratio turns out to be. Again, that's at the beginning of, uh, or at the end of my fast, and what I haven't been doing for several months, and I'm trying to be nice to myself, is that I used to do my show on Sundays, which was at the beginning of my fast, and then I would show you my numbers throughout my fast on Instagram. But I got to a point where my Sundays were constantly filled with preparing for a show and the time where I was trying to be with my family and slow down a little bit, I, I started revving up on like Saturday night. So it just wasn't enough downtime. And as a result, I said, okay, we're moving the show to a place where I have to be at the office for my son's wrestling practice. And that is, turns out to be Tuesday nights. So now um, I have, uh, I hadn't been checking as much in the mornings. Boy, now I get this open. Oh, man. Oh, I'm super thirsty and I cannot get this open. <laughs> I think it got like, melted closed. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, I have some ketones here, but it's really, really intense. So let's hope I don't pucker up too much. I can't get it open. <laughs> well, anyway, I am drinking my ketones tonight. This is in my fast. And again, I'm about 48 hours into my fast. Um, I had intentions of starting to fast Sunday morning, and then um, my husband made supper on Sunday night, and I said, 
oh, I can start fasting after this meal. <laughs> so I am just as human as the rest of you that when a plan starts out, accountability is really important. But when uh, I stopped checking my numbers uh, on Instagram as regularly as I used to, they got worse. <laughs> My A1C is a lot higher than I want it to be. I have a goal over the next year to get my A1C down into the fours. I'd love it to get to 4.5, but it's pretty hard to do that. So I'm trying to set realistic expectations. And if you followed along on the Dr. Boss channel earlier this year, we did a whole series about how changing habits a little bit at a time is how we change them consistently. Uh, we called it Atomic Keto by using some of the habit stacking or some of the tiny behavior changes that result in long-term stable outcomes. So um, if you didn't check out that series, it's on a playlist on our show and I loved it. I had a few fans read the book and follow along and do some of those um, uh, little changes in their own life uh, throughout that time. But on our show, I, I check my numbers during the fast. I can really stress my metabolism during a fast, but my morning numbers, if you've been watching on Instagram, are not as great as they used to be. And <laughs> I guess that's part of being human. Uh, I do have some announcements for the week. Uh, uh, I have a, a, few, um, uh, a few things that over my, what I call the speaking season, I have uh, been um, announcing the places that I'm gonna be. So we're at one of the last talks that I have live, uh, which I, I, I am thankful to do live talks because I don't have to do any of this audio visual stuff that has to work. I literally spent 45 minutes before this show making sure that the sound on the guest really goes here but doesn't go here and doesn't loop there. So everybody pray that in the next 10 minutes everything goes like it's supposed to. Um, but uh, the live events are truly uh, something where I miss seeing an audience after all the COVID events made everything virtual and every clinic visit virtual and every support group went virtual. That um, when I started my support group here in Tampa, again, every Tuesday at eight o'clock in the morning, if you're looking for a support group, come to the bowling alley on North Armenia. And we do this for anybody who wants to find a keto support group. I lead it every week and um, people fly in from all over the place to say, I just wanted to come to your support group. And honestly, it is uh, uh, quite the compliment for them to do that. But um, I, I have been counting down and sharing where I'm gonna be live because I love it. I love meeting the people, getting back into honest to goodness, real relationships. And I think that starts by you know shaking hands and being in the same place together. So. Um, this upcoming uh, event uh, happens that first week in August, from August 4th to the 8th, and is called Keto Orlando Summit. If you haven't checked out this event, I'm actually quite excited about this. Not only are they, are they my neighbors, uh, I, again, I now live in Tampa, which is a new home for me as of one year ago this week. We, I think we were about to move out of the hotel in, you know, in another five days uh, and into a place that had a roof and a, my own toilet. <laughs> Hotel rooms for six weeks nearly killed me. Uh, but as I look at being a Floridian, I, I'm super excited to be invited to an event here in Florida uh, that is in Orlando. So Keto Orlando Summit, if you want 10% off of that, you can use the, the discount code Dr. Boz. But most importantly, if you're looking for keto community, um, as I've shared my other live events, I've really been looking forward to this, not only because they're my neighbor, but because they also are mostly known for the keto community that they're creating. And that, that just makes me smile. I'm very excited about being part of their team and being invited to their event and uh, hopefully gaining some neighborly relationships as I speak at their event. Uh, so a couple more announcements before we move on. I really need to open this. <clears throat> Oh, hey, there we go. Keep trying. All right. We're going to do it that way. All right. Thank you. Thank you for getting that open. Uh, just keep, keep at it. <laughs> All right. So I am going to do the rest of the announcements now that I can. Uh, I've had a drink of water. Uh, the rest of those announcements were what? Oh, yes. Here we go. Uh, so I wanted to start with, um, actually on our website, I, I have several of you typing in questions already. I can see you over on that page. Good job. 
the, the questions really do help us um, uh, dive into our audience and answer the questions at the end of the event. We try to link them to the ones that uh, uh, are related to our uh, discussion. So if you hear a part of our conversation and you have a question, please type it in the chat and my, my assistants will um, uh, copy and paste that into the place where they sort out the questions that really are connected to the, the discussions that, that we're about to have. Um, I did want to share that uh, several of you have been um, really hopping on that bandwagon with me and checking your hemoglobin A1C. So if you're at the Dr. Boz show, let me do um, this. Uh, if BozMD.com shows you our store. And if you click on that A1C test, we have about uh, 30 tests left before they need to be reordered. So if you are looking for that test, I would click on those as soon as possible. Uh, we're doing our best to restock them and what a great problem to have to see that people really are appreciating um, the ability to order their own blood test, leave me out of it, leave your insurance out of it, and really take ownership of not just testing your uh, A1C, but um, monitoring it uh, until it gets better. That after my results came back last week that weren't so perfect, uh, I had my other teammates agree that we were all going to check it again in four weeks to see how well we can improve. In the last week, I've gone to the sauna like five times and I did a, my, you know, usually I go to the CrossFit workout with uh, the interns and, and my sons, and I'm definitely the oldest lady in the room, but I was, I worked extra hard thinking I've I'm trying to lower my A1C in one month. So um, thanks for the accountability, folks. <laughs> and we are going to check our A1C in a month. Uh, at the at as, as a physician, um, I really only check that every three months because that's what your insurance company would pay for it. But personally, when I'm trying to get my numbers as good as possible, you should see an improvement in a month. And so let's see how well we do. Uh, pray for me. <laughs> pray for the ones that said yes, that they would do this with me. Uh, and then before we get to our guest, I'm gonna take time to say, oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you for two people that wrote in a great review. Um, again, short but sweet, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time to do this. In the last week, there's actually three really awesome short reviews uh, on the book Keto Continuum. Uh, this is the book that I used uh, on the for the curriculum when I launched the online course, Consistently Keto. As many of you might remember, I was stuck in Hawaii. I know that sounds like a, you know, definitely first world problem to have, but I couldn't see patients from Hawaii because I'm not licensed there. So my poor little clinic imploded during the pandemic as I looked for a rowboat to get back to the mainland. But thankfully I was there with my family and my kids and we launched this online course teaching so many people about um, how to do keto m medically. How do I do it in my clinic? And the first place I checked out that curriculum was that online course, uh, and it really pushed me to, to publish this book, which I planned to publish last July, um, but I didn't get it published until the, the, till the 31st of December, actually. Um, so looking at these reviews, it is self-published. When you guys write a review, it does so much for me. And these little sentences, here we had T-Dog write in saying, amazing science and wisdom shared in this book. Dr. Boz is an angel and shares life-changing information for all who wish to learn. Uh, Rebecca was really, um, <laughs> had a, just a, a very big praise saying, probably one of three most important books in my whole life. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, she said, <clears throat> do yourself a favor and get this book, then share it with your loved ones. Such a great story. And I guarantee it will blow your mind. Dr. Paz is amazing. And then finally, Faye wrote in and said, love Dr. Boz, the good doctor explains this so even I can understand. And I just wanna say thank you for, for, the, um, for writing those reviews. It is truly the best way to say thank you. Um, I, I love teaching and I really think that God locked me in Hawaii for a reason, that uh, it said I had to stop seeing patients one at a time for that season of my life so that I could do something that I wasn't really interested in doing, which was becoming YouTube famous or whatever it's called. We're almost at 300,000 supporters for our channel. So if you are watching and you haven't subscribed, um, please subscribe. I'd love to get over that 300,000 mark. Uh, and for a place where I wasn't planning on uh, living, I just, I find so many people writing me little letters, um, sending me their testimonials and, and truly changing their health 
and I've never met them. And so I just think God probably did not need to lock me in Hawaii to get me away from seeing patients long enough to do these things. Uh, and I've, I've been working with my team to get better at these YouTube videos, to have guests like I'm about to show you in a minute on the show, to struggle through the audio and pray to God this works. Um, because I, I find that these questions and these true um, uh, desire to learn keto to a higher level isn't just uh, people on my in my support group or isn't just people who have um, uh, said um, that their their health is slightly better from keto. It, it dramatically changed who they were. Um, I am currently writing curriculum now to prepare for what will be the most intense group that I've ever led. Um, and uh, our guest is actually going to be the first one to hear about it. So I'll explain more about that later. Um, for now, we're going to pray we can hear her <laughs> as I switch over to our guest. And um, I'm going to let her introduce herself. I'll give her a little bit of introduction. And um, there we go. All right, so this is Judith, who is the head of Keto Orlando Summit, one of the founders who organized uh, not only the event, but has a wonderfully inspiring story. Um, at KetoCon, while I was there, she was one of the selected folks on the stage to say, tell us about how your life changed. Tell us about how you transformed uh, your health um, without a physician, without the doctors standing next to you saying step one, step two, step three. And in many ways, through this strange um, asynchronous relationship that happens on a YouTube channel, uh, and now mm. we get to, again, meet in person. Was, was KetoCon, the, KetoCon the second time that we met? Or was that the first time you met? No. Okay. Well, we met, technically you came on Clubhouse, so, okay, but go. that wasn't in person. So this was the first time, first time in person met. okay. meeting you. Yeah. Well, welcome, Judith. I am super excited to introduce you to my, to my audience. Not only do you have an interesting topic, but I first would love you to tell a little bit about what in the world inspired you to start a keto live event um, called Orlando Keto Summit. So hello, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my name is Judith, and I am the founder of Keto for the Soul. Keto, the number four, the soul on all social platforms. Um, I came to this lifestyle three years ago. Um, this August, August 19th, will be three years. Um, I found this amazing channel on YouTube. So Dr. Boz, um, I owe it to you. Um, I found this amazing channel and I felt like I could just connect with you and trust you through the internet. I know that sounds probably crazy, um, but I'm probably not the only person who has felt this way. Um, and so I just, I gave it a shot. Um, I was struggling with postpartum depression. At this point, my daughter was four years old. Um, I was severely depressed. I was going through anxiety. Um, I am a thyroid cancer survivor, um, and that's a huge part of my story. And so I struggled for many years with my weight, and then especially after becoming a mother um, and not really knowing, um, you know, those next per like precautions to take after giving birth to a child and the things that come about with that. And so um, I had lost a bunch of weight, and then I gained it all right back, and um, I just kind of was struggling in life and life was hard. And so when I finally decided to give it a go, it was kind of like, I was at that point where I was like, you know what? It can't get any worse than this. I'm just going to go ahead and trust Dr. Boss <laughs> and I'm just going to give it all I've got. And so I started off at, um, 329 pounds was the last recorded weight. Um, and I'm down 83 pounds, um, um, the blessing side of my story is, um, I had met so many other amazing people along the way. Um, and we formed a tribe and a community. And so I actually started the very first keto community on a social audio app clubhouse. And that is how I connected with Erica Bell, who is the original founder of the Keto Orlando Summit. And her and I have locked arms. We have formed an amazing community. And we're just 
wanting to take our journeys to the next level. And so um, that's where the kind of the Keto Orlando Summit then came from. And um, it's an amazing, it's the most diverse event all around. Um, and I think that I, we're very proud of that. Uh, we represent people no matter where they're at in their journey, whether it's day one, day 30, day 550, or maybe you just want to get started. And so again, we're very proud of that because um, I think sometimes, you know, we're just nervous to kind of like, do we fit in? Do we not fit in? You know, a lot of us have struggled in life with those, those thoughts and um, maybe those disbeliefs that we've maybe told ourselves before. And so um, I'm super excited to see everyone um, next week and it's just it's what we do now in in August we have the Keto Orlando Summit it's just what we do and so this is actually the fourth annual event um, and it's I'm just super excited to have you on board Dr. Boz um, when I reached out to your page I was like she's not gonna respond and just it's just it means so much to me um, and to get to meet you in person and you just being who you are um, and what you represent for this community, it's a big deal. So I just want to say thank you. So that kind of is like mm. the long and the short. The no, story. it's great. Honestly, th there's several things that I will just follow up on saying, you know, it, it is a, you know, a selfish thing for me to point out that um, when I have a, um, um, a desire to have real relationships. Uh, and as I had my clinic, like I said, implode when I was in, in Hawaii, I couldn't see it. My staff, there was no other um, mid-level provider in my clinic at the time. So nobody else could see patients on my behalf. And, and it was a pandemic. It was like, oh my word. So as I transitioned to what I think God just locked some doors saying she's going to be pretty stubborn and, I, and not do it. I, I want to do what I want to do. I like the relationships. I loved the intimacy of what happens in a clinic, taking care of chronic diseases. And, um, and then I just see the blessings that have come through um, how, how intense uh, these health problems are in in lives that don't have access to physicians that i mean i was an independent physician not working for corporate uh, anymore and although that's a lot harder model to keep uh, going as a physician uh boy it just had the rewards that i i i really i was hungry for i was hungry for the relationships and so to watch that fade away and then just be very um, I don't know, faithful <laughs> to say it's going to work out. I don't know how it's going to work out. But one of my teammates always says, if it hasn't worked out, then the end isn't here yet. By the end, it all works out. Uh, and I, I truly think that it's stories like yours where, you, I mean, do you know how many people lost 83 pounds in my clinic before I pushed go on YouTube? And the answer was right. in, in one hand. And the, I mean, it was four of them and they had all gained the weight back. And that was 20 years of my best care saying, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know how to do this. And when I said, let's use a different way to teach people with stories like yours that, it, I mean, it gives me goosebumps to say, look at the inspiration of what can happen if I sacrifice what it is that I like, which are personal intimate relationships. But it's also what pushes me to, uh, to really um, be a part of um, your uh, your journey, but your organization that's happening within an hour's drive of where I live now, and a, 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 a dramatic response of, um, you know, being infused into an, an audience of people that are looking for that advanced education, but also for um, a community of others saying, where are you at in this journey? So that brings me to ask some questions about your own health, because uh, I know lots of yeah. keto channels out there. They bring on experts and uh, they have really awesome, interesting conversations. But um, I, I, I have a soft spot for, first of all, anybody that's from the Midwest and you're an Iowa girl. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I also uh, love to hear patient stories and um, where they've ended up, and maybe what questions they have that would be related to the struggles you have, and see if we can answer some of them. I see them coming in on our chat. I am gonna g give a prompt out to my team to say if you can post um, uh, her uh, Judy's 
a link to her page on our chat. We'll pin that at the top so that you can find her channel and really help her and support her throughout, not just her journey that she's having now, but also that her voice has been echoed as she's bravely stood up and said, let's do a, a conference, let's have a, an event. So um, why don't you go ahead and uh, explain uh, some of the news that you did share at KetoCon and we can now share again. And then maybe <laughs> you can go through some questions that you have about your health and how I might be able to help you with that. Yes, so one very important part of um, my story that I did leave off, I was thinking like, oh, I forgot that part, uh, <laughs> is that, um, so throughout the past year, my husband and I, um, after we got married, finally, after the pandemic, um, we do have a beautiful seven-year-old little girl, Madison, uh, but Madison has been wanting a sibling. And so um, this, the past, I guess this past year, I was like kind of yo-yoing with this maintenance, like, oh, I'm good. I can enjoy the keto treats and the snacks and all those extra things. Um, but I will tell you that, um, trying to conceive and have another child. Um, it was not working uh, for us. And I was told many years ago, with not having a thyroid, there's just certain things that I may have to do differently. And so uh, for me, I think it was in April, I was finally like, all right, like, let's, it, I really wasn't even necessarily per se, just thinking about the baby, but I was like, I'm ready to take my healing on the inside to the next level. And so um, I know that you've heard me say that um, Dr. Barry, who I absolutely love, which I found through your YouTube channel, uh, he has, I've been listening to him speak about um, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs now for some time. And so I was like, you know what? I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready for this. So I started doing beef, bacon, and butter and eggs. But then I also was following your regimen um, and I was going through uh, one of your courses and I started to do the um, eight weeks of 172 hour fast a week. Wow. And so I got, I got to the third, the third, I, it might've been the fourth fast. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> I found out that um, I was having a baby. And so, Yay! So um, I was finished, but the funny thing is, is I was finishing my last 72 hour fast and, and it was the easiest fast that I had done out of all the fasts. And I was like, everybody's gotta do a fast. I still like a 72 hour fast. I'm still like the biggest advocate now of like the 72 hour fast. Um, and so I was finishing this fast and my seven year old says, mommy, there's a baby in your belly. And I'm like, there is no way like i just did a 72 hour fast there's no way there's a baby in my belly and um, no way your daughter because... pointed, your, your daughter said this to you before you had a positive pregnancy test yes oh my god yes yes <laughs> oh that's so funny and, and i had um my husband had got on to me like stop taking all these pregnancy tests so i had stopped because i was like okay i'm obsessing you know i'm thinking about it too much um so i was like you know what I haven't taken a test in a while. So if I take this test, I'm not obsessing right now, you know, kind of one of those moments. So I took the test and it said positive. Oh my gosh. I took a second test because I didn't believe the first test. <laughs> it said positive. So um, we're now expecting a little baby. I'm 14 weeks um, and thriving. So I'm just super excited. Um, and I know like, my questions, I guess, for you are probably, you know, they're more pregnancy, That's thyroid, great. Great. keto related mm -hmm. just for this. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, when I started my journey three years ago, I would have been like, is this even, is this okay? And so I guess my first question to you, and maybe it's for somebody else, I know it'll help somebody else. And the question is, is ketosis safe for pregnancy? Right. So let's start with that. That's an easy one, right? <laughs> okay. So you know, when you look at um, some things that I, I think become so poignant when you're pregnant, uh, it is that the focus on your body becomes a lot less uh, and the focus on the baby becomes greater. And when I look at my practice and look at, I have three sons and <laughs> I am I praise God that they are healthy kids from day one. But I think as a mom, uh, when I was pregnant and when I would, would counsel patients, the first, first thing I always think about is um, 
maybe this is why my clinic turned out the way it did, is how well is the baby's brain developing? And what is the baby's health going to be based on mom's health? And, uh, you know, I've had people uh, and I've had personal experiences with good, really close friends that their focus on their health when they're pregnant. Um, yes, it was about the child, but it wasn't nearly as um, um, balanced between mom's health is reflective of baby's health during that pregnancy. So as I, as I look at, you know, what are some of the improvements that uh, I've kind of changed my tune about over the last, you know, 20 years of advising patients is that um, I can remember, you know, advising patients that, yes, we need to keep your A1C down. We don't want you to get diabetes, but, you know, you know, chase those, that nausea with some carbs. Uh, and, and, and I look at the advice that happens during that time and especially layering it on not only 15 years of watching addiction be uh, play out in many levels, food being a very real one of those, that even if we would take care of somebody's severe uh, um, chemical addiction, food would come right in as a close second uh, to replace that. And so as you look at someone who's successfully lost over 80 pounds and how much that has improved your brain, improved your mental status, and um, really rewarded you with this gift of being that mother who is truly present for your daughter, now present for this pregnancy, because uh, even though depression and anxiety will still probably haunt all of us throughout times of our life. It's nothing like the paralyzed story you told me about where you, you and you told on stage at KetoCon. And so to say, what's the best thing that we can do for baby Judith, whatever, um, you know, for baby Judith? And that is that your mental health stays as strong as possible, that you continue to have a journey that is strong metabolically and, and partnered with the best brain health. Uh, and ketosis absolutely is a safe place for pregnancy, that we know that your, your um, cognitive focus, your energy, and we know evolutionarily that ketosis, you know, pregnancy has been happening since the beginning of time. And, and be, <laughs> since the beginning of time, most of the human race spent most of their life in a state of ketosis. That even th though now we put it as the keto diet and they have to eat the low carb and high fat yeah. and focus on all these rules, which it really wasn't that hard when we didn't have all the process around our own um our own consumption of food for those for those times, but the best part about when a when somebody is pregnant is um, that resurrection of improved health um, over the last four three years. You said three years. Um, yeah, it is it is a gift, um, but it is also very close in proximity relative to how how easy it can be to go back to a, a depressed state or an anxious state. And, and if you want to see that happen, binge on a bunch of carbs and watch how emotional they get. Um, yeah. I think one of the best um, you know, glimpses inside metabolic health has been my patients who have either done a, a fantastic job of reporting their numbers, correlating that to some of their symptoms, and then studying that, not just in one patient, but you know, hundreds of patients that go through, and then they test things. They say, "Well, I'm I'm fine. I'll be I, I'll be better." And many times they don't come into the clinic anymore. They would they would come to the support group and say, "Boy, I'm really yeah. struggling with my focus, or my I feel more depressed, or that anxiety's back, or my migraines back." And these other you know brain health signals um, surely returned as soon as those carbs got up to a certain level. So first off, I want to say your baby is in safe hands if you continue with a, 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 um, a state of ketosis. Um, but I'll push it to say that a time of fasting is a lot different uh, equation with somebody who's pregnant. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, since, yeah. <laughs> since you've, you've been pregnant, um, have, you, have you done any fasting since then? Zero? No, no. That was, <laughs> that was the last one. And honestly, um, I'm, I've learned throughout my journey is just knowing, you know, when my body is hungry, that it's time to eat, mm -hmm. you know, and not fighting that. And so my first trimester, I just made it to the second. Thanks. Yeah, praise so God. Cool. That's really uh, good moment. <laughs> but that first trimester, um, it, it was tough in the sense of those cravings and those urges. And it was like, I wanted it. And every time I ate something that I, sh that I, I shouldn't have, or, you know, I normally mm -hmm. wouldn't eat. I, my mental health was messed up and I was affected and my stomach 
with her. And it was like, the baby was like, no, 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 no. We don't want this. We want the good stuff. We want, we don't want this extra stuff. So no, um, no fasting. Um, and luckily the cravings have subsided right now. And, um, yeah, so I've just been eating when my body, you know, when I feel like mm -hmm. I need to eat pretty much. Well, and I think that's a great that's a great place to begin. When you look at some of the changes that happen during, let's take a non-pregnant person and talk about uh, fasting and thyroid. Um, and then we're going to layer on pregnancy. So again, on this channel, we don't use the word fasting until they get to 36 hours. So um, I would say that it would be wise for you to still have the restraint of um, a time restricted eating, like a 16, uh, eight, you know, keeping those that food in an eight hour window would still be a very safe place to be. I've had some of my pregnant uh, folks have a six hour window where they really felt that they got satiated and felt good. Um, putting most of those calorie those calories into two boluses of food called meals, but uh, I really focus that you eat two times a day, and knowing that your recent 80 pound weight loss was likely coupled with an, a dramatic improvement of insulin. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. our, our bodies keep track of where that insulin resistant came from. And so to reverse completely insulin resistance, um, I usually see that when they've been to ideal body weight for about five years. So knowing that that's a long journey before that memory of cells and memory of insulin is disappeared, um, you're at a, it is a danger point for being pregnant and then in close proximity to having what would be an out of control insulin resistant problem, which is where the 80 pounds came from. Reversing that, you got the health benefits, you got the mind benefits, and you got the, the, the gifts to be able to share with other people, which I think is, you know, the journey God has you on. Um, so keep doing that. But in your mind, I would remember that the restraint uh, of keeping those calories in a window is probably a very important part of um, letting your body be as healthy as possible with the growth of baby as uh, best as possible. But surging that insulin to a high level while gestating a baby increases baby's risk of uh, a blunted brain development. Uh, an increased insulin resistance um, linked to obesity, uh, linked to mental health issues that uh, are mostly precipitated in those teenage years. Uh, it sounds like a lot of pressure for a mom to say, oh my goodness, I can give all that to my baby. Um, but you're like, no, no, no just, just know that, um, it, that, that there, there's a huge motivation. And I don't know a mother that doesn't you know, think about what is it that I'm impacting while I, while I take care of the baby that you're gestating. Uh, and it's a gift. It's a, it's a time that you only get for a few months of life. Um, so enjoy it. But as you do that, um, keeping that restraint of a, of a narrowed window between you know, around eight hours is what I would okay. keep it close to. And, and that really is for your protection to not surge your insulin higher than it already is surged because of the pregnancy. So the reason we all worry about um, type 2 diabetes or insulin, uh, excuse me, gestational diabetes while pregnant is because that insulin changes. It is a protective process of, you know, being um, prepared for creating another human life. And that uh, that does, ha that happens with, that's what insulin does. It's one of the times where there's nothing you can do to stop that. What we want, what we don't want to do in a case like yours is to have that overshoot because of um, a very okay. delicate and fragile um, time that you've got, which is three years, great weight loss, solid improvement in many markers that you've shared. And, um, and even on today's show, that mental health is one of the best places for me to look at to say how, mm -hmm. how well have they returned that insulin to closer to a baseline. So I don't want you to head back in that direction, and I, I, I'm going right. to give you that. That's my first advice. Um, but let's, let's now loop that thyroid into a story and talk about somebody first that's not um, pregnant. So when we look at 72-hour fasting, I am a big proponent of that that one of, the, one of the things that I've been working on, uh, and I've spent a little too much time, I, I told my uh, team that we're, we're gonna have less of these YouTube videos until we get this curriculum uh, out the door, and that is that we're preparing a 21-day challenge for a limited number of students to do what I would contend is the most intense um, and clinical process of a ketogenic diet for 21 days. And, and in that process, I've done, spent 
much time reviewing my patients, but also reviewing uh, uh, what happens in um, in the literature about other extreme extreme situations. A 72-hour fast is one of those places where I think it's the sweet spot, sweet spot for nearly every patient, even if you're insulin-dependent diabetic. Um, uh, the exception here is someone who's pregnant, but that that response of 72 hours, uh, truly it heals more problems than I could ever prescribe my way out of. That I don't think it's an accident that you got pregnant while, while flexing your metabolism to that 72 hour fast. Now, one of my favorite lectures that is buried deep inside uh, the, the books of, that I've written, but also in the curriculum for the first online course, there was this bonus chapter at the end that was an hour long and it, I just geeked out. I didn't take advice from any Buddy. It wasn't short. I shared a bunch of slides. I used the word norepinephrine and cortisol. And I talked about these patients that are, you know, that fasted for 72 hours and these, you know, obese patients that fasted for you know, 72 hours and obese patients that fasted for five weeks. And uh, anyway, I went through literature and said, this is what I see in my clinic. And as I prepare for this awesome, uh, um, you know, challenge that I, I am going to try to to, to launch in the next month here. Um, it's a 72 hour fast that also is the tipping point for a thyroid. That um, I don't like patients, especially that are thyroid, to go past 72 hours. But I do push them to go to 72 hours once they're on a, a baseline uh, of what I say, a baseline keto continuum, where they've got a solid metabolic state, not just um, a, a standard American diet where um, they then went low carb. I need them in a state of ketosis for most of the time before they really push to do that 72 hour fast. And what I'm really trying to recruit for those patients is that their fat-based endocrine systems can handle it, that they can meet the needs yeah. of the patient. And even with that healthy person, by 72 hours, we can start to see the peak of the thyroid really switch saying, oh, this isn't just fake. They're, they're not going to eat. <laughs> you know, when you don't eat for the first 36 hours, I swear you're just kind of like tickling your cells saying, no, we're, we're kind of we're doing some woo-woo. But by 72 hours, every cell in your body is like, what are you up to? <laughs> And you can yeah. see, you can see the endocrine switch of that, especially in the thyroid, where we see the TSH really floor uh, or really fly, saying, "Hey, we need some more thyroid." We can see the thyroid uh, itself start to shut down, so that's the the T4 coming out of your thyroid, and then we can see your wow. your T3 uh, and reverse T3 really start to churn, saying, "Hey, we are trying to shut down the thyroid," and so uh, that's why I would not push people to go past a 72-hour fast. Um, ever. I, I think you can get the best outcomes with steady, stable, repeated 72-hour fasts, uh, even if they have a thyroid. And maybe especially if they have a thyroid that's dysfunctional, that you are pulsing and stressing. Again, that that word hormesis, where you push the body and get an optimal response from your endocrine system, and then you don't. And then you stress it again, and then you don't. And Although I don't push people to a 72-hour fast the first time they fast, it is that measurement yeah. really pushing their system and getting some outcomes that are, it's like magic. It really is. I mean, you got pregnant. <laughs> and, so, I, and I didn't even add to that I went um, four weeks in. I had, it was time for a physical. And so I went for a physical and this was the first time since I was 16 years old, that my number, my thyroid numbers were regulated based off of my Synthroid pill that I take every ah. single day. And my A1C was a 4.6. And oh. it was just like, my numbers were just like out of this you world. Win. And I was like, what? Yeah. Oh. yeah. No, you win. <laughs> no, so. I, that's such a, that's such a phrase. Awesome I mean, to start because... a pregnancy out with that level of endocrine health, that's just beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh, because, you know, dovetailing that into your situation where what is the most important part about the journey you're having, it is the health that you begin at. You're going to stress that body. It's part of pregnancy. And to know that that's where you started, I mean, I have goosebumps again just saying, oh, my gosh, that's yeah. so perfect. Because the health of your baby's, especially brain development, uh, we know that mom's thyroid needs to be well regulated during pregnancy. And, and we have amazing tests to check that in today's world. And I know people get really wigged out about 
did you check the reverse T3 and did you do it at this time of day and was the moon the right circle? And I mean, the, and I'm like, just make sure T3, you know, your TSH and your free T4, at least those are in the normal range. And and that gets you 99% of what the baby's health needs to be regulated for that pregnancy. But we can play with some other things and nuances. But for the most part, when I get people's metabolic health doing well, they properly are able to use those thyroid hormones way better than they were able to use them before we pushed their body into a repeated and chronic state of, you know, using ketones, decreasing that inflammation, pushing that endocrine system, and really, you know, giving their endocrine system a workout on a regular basis and one that they can successfully meet the needs of high hormones and then recover, and then meet the needs of high hormones and then recover. And in a pregnancy state, you got your health and your baby's health that are going are right. getting to take advantage of what you've really put the hard work in for doing that that is incredible mm -hmm. thank you so besides that do you have so, other questions i do i've okay. got i've got a little list here so <laughs> you're, you're in charge um and and a lot of these two um i just i just think the everyday person we just ask ourselves these questions so i always say like there's no dumb questions so i hope you those. Nope, that's exactly um right. so my next question is my next question is, is there anything I should do differently now that I'm pregnant and in ketosis? Um, maybe some vitamins, do you recommend? I mean, I know um, like a normal prenatal or something like that, but is there anything extra you think that I should add in or take away or Absolutely. Just do differently? So, yeah, so there are some definite things that your body has higher needs for while pregnant. Um, number one, it needs more iron. So as you look at brain development for you and for baby, iron is not, a, there is no substitute for making sure that your iron levels are higher. That I know it is very common to become anemic during pregnancy, but I would say much like it's common to be overweight uh, in today's world, anemia is common. That if you go back, and again, I love using ancestral health to kind of get us out of our own, you know, first world problems here in America, where if you looked at a tribal approach to a woman that was pregnant, um, any type of um, kill for the community, the first organ that was harvested and given to uh, the children and the pregnant mothers was the liver. Um, and I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> That, <laughs> that, that baby's brain development truly the length of your baby's hippocampus which you, you if you've not if you've taken my brains course everybody knows that hippocampal length is so important yeah. um so you want your baby's brain to have the best development of the hippocampus during that time uh, during gestation and iron uh, uh access to iron is one of those key components that is so often overlooked because it's so stinking common that our i mean i i have ob guys like oh everybody's anemic and i'm like no you don't need to be anemic uh and in fairness what what happens in most healthy people um, as they become overweight and they become uh inflamed for whatever reason is that they can't keep the iron on the inside of their body and i hate the term leaky gut but it is truly that the the nutrients go out as often as they come in and the development of those red blood cells delivering oxygen but also delivering nutrients um, to your whole body and transferring nutrients to your baby uh, is a really important marker for how well baby's brain development is to be measured also B12 is a very important uh, molecule for spinal development of your baby's uh, settings, and it is a water-soluble, easy vitamin to keep, uh, to keep high during pregnancy, but folate and B12 have been strongly linked to, uh, the deficiencies of those are strongly linked to some developmental problems with that spinal cord and the fusion of uh, the brain and the, the back of the skull. So little, you know, they're worrisome things when, uh, when they go wrong, but your job as a mom is to try and keep those as high as you can during pregnancy. Um, if you don't like liver, <laughs> there well, are- I was gonna ask, yeah, I was gonna say, was this where you were, I thought you were gonna go with sardines is where I thought you were going. <laughs> Can I have sardines right now? Because I thought I couldn't. So that was my excuse of why I haven't tried them yet. 
<laughs> well, you know, there's there's this, you know, the toxicity of mercury is, you know, if you get super high levels. I mean, I swear as a pregnant person, you can Google nearly everything and find a reason you shouldn't eat it. Um, but um, yeah. I, I personally remember uh, taking the literature to my ob and showing them how I can have coffee. <laughs> So now it wasn't to the level that I probably wanted to have coffee, but I had data where pregnant women were safe on coffee, um, especially when they were otherwise healthy. So again, if you had um, a, a, a obsession with sardines and you were having a couple cans a day, so we're talking 10 cans a week, uh, we were going to have to talk about some, some mercury toxicities. If you're trying to get in one can of sardines a week in the name of baby's best brain health, you're safe. You, you okay. know, that, that's not, um, there's, there's hardly toxicity okay. in something that infrequent. But the true, the true other thing is, have you ever eaten liver? Oh, um, so I've got your chart at the house and I have had Brun, I can't Braun even say it. Yeah, Braun um, Liverwurst. Yeah, Braun I've Schreiber. had that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I've had that. And what do you think? So I can have that. Mm -hmm. what you, you, no, that's good. Right? I don't mind. I feel like I ate that as a child up in Iowa. I feel like Amen. my dad always like, the, the, you're in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yeah, you're in the corner of, it's like, if, you, if you're from Northwest Iowa and you don't know what a wrestling mat is and you don't want to know what Braunschweiger <laughs> is, then you didn't leave your cave. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So the Braunschweiger actually, the processing of it and, you know, in our area, um, there was several different, you know, flavors of it. So you can go to a meat market and get a Braunschweiger that isn't quite as processed. And there are a few carbs in it. But again, during pregnancy, what you're really looking at is the routine consumption of iron. You want to absorb that iron often enough to keep your iron and baby's iron high, high enough. And it's, it's really fatty. It, I think it tastes great. Um, and my husband never eats that one. So it's always in the fridge when I buy it. Uh, so I don't have to fight for that one. He doesn't eat the sardines as well either. So I, I, I don't have to fight over that either. But I would do and, better with the liverwurst. Yeah. So if you like that, just do that. And honestly, it, it does. It's one of those fatty meats that when it's in the fridge, it really doesn't go bad. So, uh, I mean, Obviously, a month later, it might go bad, but you, you can have a tablespoon three times yeah. a week or a slice, you know, once a day or really yeah. that's a, a very easy way to get the iron absorbed, to have it access. And it's it's a it's a perfect way to give yourself the excuse to stay away from the sardines for a while. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Um, and you said B12. Yeah. Like, folate that and B12. Be like a vitamin. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of ways to get that um, in your in your diet. Um, you know, the the, the I'm going to I'm going to not be able to recall them off the top of my head as, as quickly as I want to. But um, okay. yeah. So let, let me follow up on that one and get you that list because okay. I, I just don't want to speak incorrectly. So there's some things I can edit out of YouTube, but I can't re-speak the words when I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> So no. B12, easy no, to get, fully sounds... easy to get. And every prenatal, that's what's super loaded in there is uh, the vitamins that you just have a higher demand for while, while making another human. So Okay. And how do you feel? Okay. And I feel really good now. I say now. So um, in the beginning when I didn't know I was pregnant, um, I felt great because I was fasting and eating uh, beef, bacon, butter, and eggs. And then it was like, as soon as I found out, it was like, oh God, I don't have any energy. It's all gone. And so I, I did add extra carbs in and that's when I was really feeling bad. So since getting back from KetoCon, I've, I've kind of even just publicly put it out there. Like I'm struggling hold me accountable because mm. sometimes that's just what you have to do. Oh yeah. And so when you said your A1C, I was like, Oh, that was me. Um, and so luckily I have, I have a good support system where I've just kind of put it out there. Like, Hey, you know, I'm human. I'm, I still struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to do what's best for me. I want to do what's best for the baby. And I feel the best. That's the other thing. I oh. feel like I thrive. I feel like I, I'm like, all around life is just better when I'm in ketosis for me. So it's like, I've found what works for me. So when I go off track, it just, you know, I just automatically just don't really feel that good anyway. So, um, I actually had a coworker say to me today, um, they're like, 
did you just like miss the like growing up morning sickness stage? Did you just like miss all these? And I'm like, it's probably because they put my body back in ketosis. And I, I don't know. I don't know if that, you know, maybe there's a correlation between, I don't know. Morning well, sickness I'll, I'll tell you that um, that uh, that improvement in your overall metabolism is is one part of the um, you know metabolic health, but it, it 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 also is very much related to the um, um, the the peristalsis of what your of what your gut does. That I find that yeah. when even just other reasons, like my husband loves to go deep sea fishing. And um, before I went keto, I'm a flatlander from the Midwest, right? If fishing in big waves do not go on the same thing. I didn't, I'm like, I'm a tough girl. I'll have no problem. And I am puking over the edge by half a mile out. I'm like, what do you mean we're going to go out 50 miles before we even put the thing down? And so th this was the season of just getting intensely seasick. Um, whenever we went and I loved spending time with him. I loved how much he loved uh, to do that fishing trip. Um, and then I went keto and thought, okay, um, I didn't overpromise. I didn't even really think that it was going to do much, but my gosh, I handled the waves so much better. Uh, and I don't think it was because I spent a ton of time, but it was just that go fasting. What happens when you're, um, when you're the peristalsis of your gut is just a lot healthier. And so uh, that, that I've read a couple of things about why is nausea less? Why is the gut irritation so much better uh, in a ketogenic state than it, it, than it was um, prior? And that was my favorite Sort of summary of all of the <laughs> the, um, the the theories that were out there on why does um, why does nausea seem so much improved in a ketogenic state? So I, I had some helpers here, a couple of my favorite uh, supporters here about B12. Yeah, get, I, I almost said this, and you, you, if you I stumbled saying grass-fed liver, grass-fed beef, uh, very mm -hmm. high in B12. So that was the one place. Bone marrow is another place. I don't know if you've tried this, but uh, that's a hugely uh, <laughs> a intense um, flavor with, um, if you've never had it, I highly recommend that you go to a steak uh, house. And it's usually on the uh, appetizer menu because it takes a really hot, oven to get it to to taste really um i mean i think it tastes amazing um but that that's a very good um beginning but uh a couple other ones are um i think egg yolks was the other one that i think was very high in b12 so oh okay so, so plenty of places that you can um yeah i'm pretty sure it's the yolk of an egg that has the high b12 so well, it is coming to the top of the hour, and I have a little session here that I'm going to try to answer pet folks' questions, but uh, I have pinned your Keto for the Soul uh, link to the top of our uh, chat. So for those that don't uh, follow our guest, uh, Judith, please click on her um, on her link and give her the support that we love to hear of success stories. And now a, a young, I'm a mother of a young child, but a, a mother that's uh, about to be of two children that we would all love to keep supporting you and just wish you the best of health. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, is it next week already? Yeah, it's next week, right? Yeah. Yes. Next <laughs> and I, week. And I, go ahead. I want, I forgot to mention too, that if you're not able, if, People are not able to come. We just launched the virtual option. So oh, you have really? to go to the website I didn't hear about that. and check that out. Perfect. Yep. Okay, great. Well, I have the interns coming to help me run the table. We are doing um, the some of the uh, tests for A1Cs. For anybody that shows up, we'll be able to test them. And um, I speak on Saturday, I think, right? Yep. Yep. So yep. I'll see you Thursday yeah. night for a, a, a lunch, a supper thing with everybody, and then Friday at the event and Saturday in, uh, at the event. So I will see everyone there, and especially you, Judith. And I just say thanks for being amazing in what you did with your own health and willing to talk and share that story with other people. And congratulations on the conception of your baby. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate everything you do uh, for this community. So thank you so much. We'll talk more in uh, in Orlando next week. Okay. All right. Thank you. You bet.
All right, everybody. So we are going to get to your questions. I know it's the top of the hour, so stick around if you can just for a couple of them because I think a few of them have a lot to do with uh, thyroid so, uh, and some of the other questions. So I'm going to hop to those for sure because there's a couple of them that said, I, um, Krista says, hi, everybody. I have thyroid nodule. And then there's somebody down here who also said, um, uh, I lost 50 pounds but regained 10. Uh, A1C of 5.3, now 5.7, and I have Hashimoto's. Um, and then I'm going to come back and read those numbers a little bit more. But finally, she said, the Krista also said, I had a thyroid ultrasound shows that I have small nodules, but the doctor says that they're not causing any problem and only need to monitor. We'll continue to do the protocol. Um, so that is uh, what I would start with is thyroids are goofy. They are nodule in nature. If you look at them under the microscope, they are meant to be bumpy. Um, and when some of those bumps grow more than other parts, you can see uh, and you can feel nodules. We, we have amazing ways to look at the thyroid, not just with our lab tests, but also with, that, with an ultrasound. And what I have noticed with um, not only the um, thyroid nodules, but also that low-grade um, Hashimoto's where there's a, a, a thyroiditis, where there's an autoimmune process attacking the thyroid. Um, in my past life, my, the, the journey where I, I didn't recommend keto um, with this almost universal recommendation for patients, um, I, would, I would have um, never believed that you could reduce thyroid nodules as much as I've seen them reduce with the ketogenic diet. I had no space in my brain for somebody to be able to reverse an autoimmune problem that was really wreaking havoc with their body and was totally measurable on the ketogenic uh, b before they did keto. You could measure those antibodies. They were high. Um, they were at a level that shouldn't reverse. I mean, it, that's, it's supposed to stay that way. And my goodness, um, I was wrong. I, I have patient after patient that um, they wanted they wanted the best outcomes. They really wanted to see what's what happens if I don't take my thyroid medicine for a few months. I'm like, well, many people don't feel well when they don't have enough thyroid, but we can do it the reverse way. And some patients said, I just want to stop it. And I'm like, okay, we'll follow up in three months and see how you feel. And some of them felt terrible. <laughs> But others were in the state of advanced ketosis, and they were coming in for their thyroid checks. And those that TSH was, um, I mean, my replacement of their thyroid was excessive. So it was pushing their TSH down. And um, and they felt, f they felt fine. They didn't feel much different. But as I took away the thyroid hormone and that TSH continued to... Um, to either f feel over or that the numbers uh, appeared that I was suppressing the production of TSH because I was over replacing the thyroid. Again, I had never removed somebody from a thyroid medication before I started um, advancing them through a ketogenic state. And the people who are able to reverse that, they push their Dr. Boz ratio to a level of 40 or less uh, several times throughout the week. This is not um, like what I do here is I push my Dr. Boz ratio for a fast. I am going to do my best to not eat until tomorrow morning. I'm really pushing to get to a 72-hour fast this week because I want to reduce my hemoglobin A1C because I know that I've pushed the edges of um, eating late at night and adding things into my diet that weren't there six months ago and for sure weren't there a year and a half ago. But I've had seasons, so I'm cleaning up my, my profile again and looking to recheck my numbers. Uh, and it was in those states where you advance that uh, ketogenic state that you can really see this reversal of health problems. And it doesn't take long. I mean, to get someone's uh, Dr. Boz ratio to bounce and to really, um, or to, to, to suppress, which is, again, suppressing that insulin, you really can find an improvement in that metabolism around um, an autoimmune process, but you don't do it one time and think it's over. It is a constant um, push of their metabolism that that allows that system to almost reset those white blood cells, stop making the the antibodies that attack your own cells, and and really that comes with the cleanest of of inflammatory states, which can only be found with this persistent and stable state of ketosis. Well, we are after the hour. I am going to check my numbers here, and I want to uh, share the, the little tease I gave you earlier on the show about what I am working on, and that is that I have been um, 
I've been thinking about doing this for a long time, and as I, um, I, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, maybe, <laughs> that when I did consistently keto and I crammed all of that good data into um, that last bonus lecture of the consistently keto, um, that some of it is in those final chapters of the keto continuum, but much of the education got left on the cutting room floor. Uh, so here's the ketones I'm checking here. Oops, you about to drip on the. Um, um, I, I really feel that the place for checking um, and, and teaching about what um, I look at in a state of ketosis. So ketones about the same from 88 to 84 and, and my, or excuse me, glucose from 88 to 84 and my ketones went up from 1.1 to 1.8. Again, the reason I do this is to show you that, yes, I check my numbers. I'm doing better at checking them first thing in the morning. Give me a little grace. <laughs> and that if you do take ketone supplements, which is what I took today. I took uh, ketones in a can. Um, I didn't put my name on these for, by accident. I want people measuring their ketones. And when you take a supplement, it should take your ketones up within a short period of time. This is a live show. <laughs> so, um, so as I work on the, the curriculum for what will be a 21-day intense boost of metabolism, I'm going to be looking for 250 very um, special students who want to go on this first journey with me to say the stuff that I left on the cutting room floor uh, for what happens in people who are either stuck in their metabolism or they are um, or they are, they want a boost in their metabolism and they don't want to spend a year and a half getting them um, getting those ketones and, and getting that mat metabolism revved up. Uh, if you've never done a 72-hour fast, we are going to push for some challenges within the classroom. And we're all going to do this in a place where the platform is not going to be on Facebook, where um, when you talk this about, about this intensity of medical um, findings and measurements of medical things, we can have police tell us that we're not supposed to talk about that on a social platform, but we're, we're going to try out a new platform where th there are no advertisements. Uh, it is a com community where we can really come together and talk metabolism and not be canceled. <laughs> so I'm, I'm super excited. I hope I hope the platform is as stable, as, as solid as what they've pitched, and that I find the students that want to join me on this first class. Um, that'll be coming out in the next few weeks, so stick around, and we'll give you more information as uh, I know Linda says no Facebook yay I'm like I know it's, it is uh, that you know uh, that um, necessary evil to get information out though so that's where we've been and we've got an idea I really think it's going to work and we have some pretty cool ideas that are unfolding in the class and I must say it's one of my favorite things is to put together a lecture that encapsulates what I what goes on in my head when I see patients and when I see them stuck and then to put that in a um, in a encapsulated intense lectures and again not lectures that I put out on YouTube I, I just think it doesn't it the audience is often not they've not listened to some of the other stuff I, I, I need it in a very organized succinct way to make sure that the students all rise in their education and that the people in that playing crown that are going to be coaching and helping one another all have a level of um, education in the ketogenic diet that would be similar to the people that would be in my clinic. Again, uh, that's coming out uh, soon. Uh, I'm still in the makings of organizing it all and trying to create what I think will be one heck of a movement for people who want the, a strong metabolism. So until then, I probably need to stay in a state of advanced ketosis to get it all done. If you really liked this show and wanted to learn more about um, a thyroid. We do have a couple of uh, videos that uh, we've done in the past, and we're going to link one of our favorite ones at the end of this show. So click on that if you're watching this on replay. And for those of you that showed up live, thank you again for your questions. Um, and I will continue to show up on Tuesdays, helping you reverse these me medical problems with healthy keto living. We are signing off for Tuesday.